whenever you're ready. Okay, so um, have you guys ever thought about why restaurants generously gave unlimited bread before your meals? Um, so eating such as a simple carb for a meal, um, like bread actually produces a hunger hormone called ghrelin. So you're full at the moment, but later on in your meal, you actually get hungrier. This was stated by Dr. Marshall Stamper, and he specializes in dieting, okay? So before I knew this, I loved eating carbs, and I gained a lot of unwanted weight. I tried diet pills, diet teas, nothing really worked until I tried the ketogenic diet where I lost 10 pounds. Um, I was very intrigued not only about how much I lost, but researching, finding out what the benefits it did for our body. So that's why today I would like to share how the ketogenic diet works on the negative effects of consuming too much carbohydrates, and I will cover how the digestion process works with uh, too much carbohydrates, and the negative effects of um, the negative effects of um, consuming too many carbohydrates, and how the ketogenic diet works on the on the body, and with addition the benefits <coughs> of the ketogenic diet. Okay. So let's start by taking a look into the digestive system right here. So let's, I want all of you guys to picture a pizza pizza, okay? Think of um, the bread as the carbohydrates, pepperonis as protein, and fats as um, cheese as your fats. So we take a bite of, um, of the pizza, our mouth and our teeth start going to work, we start chewing, and in our mouth, the salivary glands produce enzymes so it can help break down the food. When we're done swallowing and breaking it down to pieces, it goes down the esophagus and it later ends up in the stomach where the stomach acts as a high powered blender. So it shakes it up into tinier pieces and chops it up and also with the aid of the hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid is usually, if you guys ever were sick one time and threw up on an empty stomach and you see green fluid, that's hydrochloric acid. Okay, so later on, <coughs> it ends up in your small intestines. This is your large intestines, and this is your small intestines. So when it ends up in your small intestines, that's where ab absorption of nutrition begins. Okay, so when it ends up in your small intestines, also the absorption begins, and um, it deconstructs and separates your proteins and um, your carbs and also your fatty acids. So when it deconstructs and separates, it <clears throat> separates into its basic form. So just think of proteins, remember the pepperonis, it breaks down into amino acids and also carbs convert into sugars and fat becomes fatty acids. Okay, so now that the absorption process has begun, they all take a trip to through the bloodstream and by the end, um, their final destination is always the liver, where the liver tells their little workers where to go and what to do. So it tells the proteins to go to their muscles to start building and repairing muscles. And the carbs, um, the liver tells the carbs to go to energy, and usually fatty acids usually just go to your fat cells and tell them just to wait there until further notice. So as we went over uh, previously how carbs were converted to sugars, and our bodies use the sugars for energy. So next, I will talk about the negative effects of having too, many too, uh, too much carbohydrates. After our bodies use what it needs from sugars, so leftover carbohydrates and sugars get converted to fatty acids because it's not needed anymore. So to be stored, it needs to uh, be stored in fat cells and wait there. So this causes the first negative effect of unwanted weight gain, um, actually this causes the first negative effect, which is unwanted weight gain from swelling of the fat cells. So next we have our second visual of um, the next negative effect. So this is a healthy liver, this is a fatty liver. So what I, what I previously went over that, you know how we eat too much carbs, it gets stored as fat, and our liver, the more carbs we eat, our liver stores the fat inside itself. So it leads to fatty liver and also called cirrhosis. If you guys don't know what cirrhosis is called, it's called liver failure. So um, it's just a really bad disease causing like a failure. When this fails, everything else in your body fails. <clears throat> our next effect would be insulin resistance. 
So if you guys don't know what insulin is, um, for sugars to get inside our cells, insulin is a transporter. So insulin is not able, or sugar is not able to get into our cells unless um, it, is, it is taken by insulin. So when we eat too much carbohydrates, the <clears throat> insulin is produced. So when there's too much insulin in our body that's being produced, our body gets less sensitive to it, um, causing our body to be, um, to be less sensitive to insulin and causing us to be resistant. So here I have a cycle of having too much carbohydrates and us being insulin resistant, it causes blood sugar rises. So if you guys know what type 2 diabetes is, this is one of the main causes of type 2 diabetes, is insulin resistance. So that's why I have a list of being pre-diabetes, obesity, type 2, fatigue, high blood pressure also. Okay, so these are the negative effects of too, many, uh, too much carbohydrates, and sometimes it can re that be reduced in some cases with the ketogenic diet. So I will now talk about the ketogenic diet, what the ketogenic diet is and how it works um, with our bodies. Okay, so with, their, um, with the ketogenic diet, we usually decrease the amount of carbohydrates we eat and also to 50 to 80 grams a day, and we increase your protein. The reason why we increase your protein is because it usually burns longer for energy, and also it decreases the level of, horm of the hunger hormones gremlin I was telling you guys about. Okay, and this is usually uh, a food pyramid or the ketogenic diet, no bread, no pasta, no sugar, and no concentrated sugars. Um, you're allowed oil with moderate amount of oils, and veggies, and protein. <clears throat> so next we have here is what is ketosis? So what I talked about previously, what the ketogenic diet was, um, the ketogenic diet is where we lower your carbs because we want you to get into ketosis. So the ketogenic diet helps our body into a process called ketosis. Simply means that our body burns fat for fuel, and ketosis occurs when you significantly limit your intake of carbs, which is the body's primary source of energy. When your body has used up all its energy from carbohydrate, it switches to its alternate fuel source as fat. And this was stated by Cynthia Scamper from Lean for Life. So our body is basically burning fat for fuel because we decrease our carbs. So getting, <clears throat> getting our body into ketosis can help our bodies in many ways. Now, let's go over the benefits of the ketogenic diet. With our bodies in ketosis, we burn fat for energy, so that gives us the benefit of actually losing weight. Okay? <clears throat> our next benefit would be um, it, helps, or it helps with diabetes. So another benefit, there was a study that was conducted in the Indiana University Health Center and they placed 262 people uh, that were diabetic on a ketogenic diet. 60% of them were able to cut down their medication and also get off their medication. And also the third benefit would be um, it, it decreases blood triglycerides, which is a risk factor of heart disease. So now that um, you guys all know more about digestive carbohydrates and their negative effects, hopefully this information helps everyone increase their awareness of what you guys place in your body. And remember that the ketogenic diet is a helpful and reliable plan um, to direct yourself towards a healthy lifestyle. All right, so Brandon, what did you think? All right, Sally. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and Sally, you go ahead and sit down. Okay. Yeah, I like how you. I like how you introduce every topic. You know, like first of all, you know, you had a good hook. You know, you gave out interesting information about you know, like you know, how the body works and uh, how you how you get full after eating carbs and you get hungry again. That's good information and also the digestive system. You know, I like. I like how you describe everything, and you know, there's there are a little bit of pauses, you know, while you're speaking. I mean, you, uh, you're probably like you're switching topics, right? So the, the delivery was 
the projection was good. You know, just, just work on your delivery a little bit, and then you were great with introducing the next topic. And you know, I like your visuals as well. I like how you describe them. And you know, you had really you had many topics. You know that that not many people know, like ketosis. And I mean, I'm not sure many people know that, but I, I like how you brought that up and how and, you know you brought up the diagram, how like, what the body does and the processes it goes through. Okay. <laughs> um, there's a lot that's really nice about this speech, but there's one kind of glaring issue that really needs to be addressed. And so let me start with that. You get to the subject of your speech, the ketogenic diet, six minutes into the speech. The first six minutes is all background material where you're talking about the digestive process and what's connected with it and some of the ways it affects those things and your subject is this particular diet, and we get through three quarters of the speech before you even define what that is. Now, I think that you need to have a little bit of that background, but you need far less of it than you give. And I think uh, it probably has to be condensed down to two or three minutes at tops, you know. It has to be half as long so that you can get to your subject. When you get to the whole process of ketosis, I'm not sure that you have enough time to explain what's going on and how it works and why it's effective and how it's different, for instance, from other diets where people are doing you know, similar kinds of things, where you could maybe be describing uh, how you know, low-fat diets aren't really effective because they don't burn the fat uh, the same way that the ketosis diet does, uh, that uh, the... Um, you know, the limiting calories isn't as effective as uh, you know, burning the stored fats is. That's what you need to be able to do if you want to lose weight, you know, that kind of thing. And that ketosis is the, is the key to getting to that particular spot. But because we've spent all this time uh, talking about the salivary glands and uh, when you vomit you get this and here's the large and small intestine and all those sorts of things which are tangentially related to the subject, uh, you don't really get enough time to talk about those things. So that's, that's my main gripe about it. And by the way, 80% of the stuff that you present on the digestive tract and everything, there's no source citation on that. I know it's all basic descriptive stuff, but that means that when you get to the stuff that has to be researched, the proof on how ketosis works, the studies that you're referring to, you don't have much time to talk about those things in yeah. depth. So. So it's way too front-loaded with that one thing. Now, let's talk about the stuff that's really solid about the speech. Uh, Brandon's worried about your delivery. I thought your delivery was very good for a first major presentation. You are not dependent on your notes very much. Uh, you, you, know, you look at the uh, slides a little bit to prompt yourself to the next thing. You have to look down a little bit, Gesundheit, a little bit to some of the, uh, the notes that you have. But usually you're talking to us and you're very enthusiastic and engaged when you're talking. So delivery stuff I think is good. The visuals, I think, are well integrated into the speech. Like I said, I think you have too much on the digestive track. You, you mentioned diabetes and you mentioned liver disease and all those kinds of things. And those are tangential to some of the benefits that you have, but they're not essential to explaining the process that you're talking about. So again, I, it, it feels like I think you need to kind of shift things around in the organization talk about ketosis more, and then those benefits, you can kind of explain them a little bit more as you go along after you've talked about the thing that is really the subject of your speech. So maybe some organization has to be shifted around also, including more emphasis on the visuals that deal with the subject that you're talking about rather than the general material. Um, but uh, the visual stuff was all integrated into the speech really well. It was large enough to see maybe the one slide on insulin resistance could have maybe been adjusted a little bit so we could see things better. But the one slide, for example, where you had the script on it and you had the color coordination between each of the points that you're talking about, how ketosis helps those particular things, I like that. Even though it's, a, even though it's script, you did include some visual message systems to make it distinct and to remind us what it is that we're supposed to... You know, why this works. Uh, and, and I appreciated that extra effort. All right, thank you.